Welcome friends, Last Guy here, and it's time for my top 10 games of 2020. That is only games that I played. Not gonna BS and say games I didn't play this year that would be amazing, like Ghost of Tsushima or things like that. Didn't get to play those games, unfortunately. But I'm gonna say these are games that came out this year or ported this year, just whatever came out this year, and I played it and I loved it. That's the top 10 games right there. The criteria simply is, when I think of my top 10, it's these. These are all games I played and it's these ones here. And so one shots are on here, and it's gonna be interesting what you think of this list, I'm sure. You can tell me what your top 10 are in the comments as well, and what you think of these top 10. At the end of the day, some things will line up with you and me, and some things will not. That's just how they are. So the honorable mentions are games that almost made the cut, but didn't get there. And we always pick three. This time it is Monster Hunter World Iceborne, which is just Monster Hunter World. I love Monster Hunter. Really love it. I, I own every single Monster Hunter game I can get my hands on, except for the Japanese imports, of course. And they're really good games. I love them so much. And this is a really good one, too. Just barely doesn't catch the cut because it is just, you know, a DLC expansion thing. Really fun DLC expansion, but there are other fun things as well. Fall Guys is the second honorable mention. Fall Guys is a very fun game from Mediatonic. Of course, uh, Monster Hunter is from a Capcom, of course. And it came out of nowhere in the summer. It was really fun. Well, people were talking about this game a year ago. It seemed like this is going to be a really fun thing. And it really is a fun game. I enjoy it a lot. And... It almost made it. It was a really fun game I played for like two months straight. Almost made there. The last one is Rune Factory 4 Special. It's a Switch port of the game. I really enjoy this game a lot. I love Harvest Moon games. I really do. Rune Factory 4 it really scratches that itch. And just, it's a game you can play all year. Same thing goes for Monster Hunter World. Those are two games you can play all year. Highly recommend those. Number 10 is Monster Train. This is a game developed by Shiny Shoe. Publisher is Good Shepherd Entertainment. It came out in May, and it is an amazing game. I spent two months straight just playing this game. Every waking moment I had, I played this game. It is a roguelike deck building game with over 200 cards, and the way it works is you are, you have you build this deck as you're playing, because that's how these work, right? But you have like two tribes you pick from. You start out with just two, and then eventually a third unlocks, and a fourth, and a fifth, and you can just keep doing these different kind of pairs. And the synergies of these different pairs are very interesting to different playstyles. It's a very fun game. I really enjoy it a lot. It's definitely one of my favorite strategy games of the year. And I really hope I can get the, the developers on the podcast someday because I really want to talk to them about this game. I want to gush about it. I love Monster Train a lot. It got 10th place. It earns that spot. It is one of the best games of the year for dang sure. Love it a lot. Recommend it. Number 9 is Journey, the band. No, the game. So the game came out in 2012. And then it got ported to Steam finally in 2020. And this game is amazing. I somehow never got spoiled on it. Finally got to play it and it is great. Developers are That Game Company, which is still the worst game company name ever. But that's the name of them. And it's a great game. It's a hell of an experience. So this game is not very long. It is an experience. That's just the best way to put it. And that experience was something magical, something special. And it really got to me. It got in here. It really did. And because of that, that is on the list. I can only just recommend it just blindly like you should play it. It is an experience. That is the best way to put it. Some people might not be the game, but if it gets into you, it will get into you. Heck of a game. Number eight is XCOM Chimera Squad. Came out of nowhere in April. I had no idea it existed until the week before it came out. I'm like, oh, that's a cool concept. I want to try that out. Play it. It's really good. It's really fun. I love it a lot. Another really great strategy game out of this year, and it makes me hope for XCOM 3. The breaching system was a really cool idea, being able to use just a bunch of different powers. You had human powers and alien powers, and utilizing them, and the enemy having a lot of these powers you could worry about as well. It was a really fun idea, and I loved it so much, and it was like, it's a cheaper, smaller game. Not this full 60 game, and it was really fun, and there's different kinds of plays you can do. You can go for these different kinds of characters, and enjoy it in different ways, and... It was a solid game that I could play again and again. I really enjoyed it, so... Good job to Fire Axes. That's 8th place for me with XCOM Chimera. 7th place is Genshin Impact, also known as Breath of the Waifus, and that is an accurate name no matter what you try to fight on that. It is Breath of the Wild with anime girls and boys. It's a bit of a faster-paced combat game. What I like about it is the elemental system. Oh, by the way, the publisher and developers are Mahoyo. And this is the best mobile game ever made. That's that's not a hard thing to say. Because it was made for PC. <laughs> and consoles. 
It just takes Breath of the Wild's idea of like climbing and just these big worlds to explore and everything, and puts World Waifus in it. The questing is pretty interesting. It's it's just it well, okay. It's good if you enjoy the daily grind of a mobile game. That's the best way to put it. If you enjoy mobile games, you want to play it on PC or on consoles, because on PlayStation 4, eventually coming to Nintendo Switch, it's on iOS, it's on Android, it's on Microsoft Windows, which is how I play it on PC. But if I want to, I can play it on my phone. It is a fun game. Easily the best mobile game ever made, because it was made for PC. That's what I will always say. It's nice colors, the elemental system is very fun, the combat system is pretty good, I enjoy it. You can play it co-op with friends, which is nice. I like fighting the bosses, the bosses are very fun to fight in this game. Dungeon's not so great. The story is interesting, but also really padded at times as well. A lot to criticize and a lot to enjoy in this game. If you like the game, you will just enjoy the grind of it. But it does have the foibles of a mobile game. It's got the daily dungeons, it's got the weekly stuff, it's got the battle pass, it's got... Um, the currencies. So there's a lot of things to like and not like about this game, but at in the end of the day, it's pretty fun. I'm still playing it since September every day, and yeah, deserves seventh place. Number six, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. So what's better than Genshin Impact, a game based on Breath of the Wild? How about a spinoff based off Bre Breath of the Wild that is a Zelda game? That's right, Hyrule Warriors is really fun. It's from Koei Tecmo. Just came out, of course, in November, and... It's really fun. If you're a fan of Warriors games, it's very fun. If you're a fan of Breath of the Wild, it's extremely fun. The way I've rated this is, it's a 7 if you're a fan of Warrior games, and if you're a fan of Zelda games, it is an 8. That's really the truth there. Because there are some hype moments if you're a Zelda fan. Extremely hype if you're a Breath of the Wild fan. And there's just so much love, there's so much content to play. Some of it is padding, but some of it is just really fun. The story mode is extremely good for the most part with the cutscenes. There's a lot of cutscenes. Surprising with how many cutscenes there are. It only gets a bit slow in the middle with some middling things, but eventually it picks up again very quickly, and it was a blast to finish. I was satisfied with the ending of the game, satisfied playing it after so many hours of it. I really enjoyed it a lot. And what's nice is the variety of play here. So, with like Dynasty Warriors, a couple of characters feel kind of samey eventually. But with Hyrule Warriors, they've done a good job of making everyone individuals. Now, some of them have interesting playstyles that aren't so great, but the majority of them are really fun to play, and I just can't stop playing them. Like, Zelda's really fun, Mipha's really fun. Oh god, I love playing Mipha. She is a whirling blade of death. Oh my god. Zelda is not so great. Uh, Impa is really fun. Impa is a very fun character. There's a lot to enjoy in this game, a lot of different playstyles to enjoy, and some playstyles I don't like, other ones will probably like, and vice versa with that. Of course, a ding towards the game is the frame rate does go to heck when 100 things die at the same time. When you're just blowing a bunch of things up, it's very unfortunate, but it's still a very fun game. I like it a lot. And yeah, we know I'm a Nintendo fan, so of course that rates it up a little bit more, and that's why I said it's a 7 for others, but it's an 8 if you're a fan of Breath of the Wild. And so just very fun. Number 6, good job. Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Fifth place is Hades from Supergiant Games. So... Hades is the evolution of Supergiant. So, you've got Bastion, and there was a really, really good game everyone loved, right? And then Transistor comes along, and people really enjoy Transistor. Not as much as Bastion. A lot of people really love Bastion. But it was this interesting evolution of Bastion. That's what Transistor was. There was The music was even better. The visuals got even sharper. The gameplay was very interesting. And then comes Pyre where the visuals are still amazing, the music is still amazing. The narrative idea here is a very interesting one. They do very interesting ideas with their games, and the gameplay was pretty fun. And then there's Haiti. Another different idea, where it's a roguelike, and it is a very fun roguelike. There's a bunch of different playstyles you can have from the base, and then you can get different powers to make your playstyles change even more. There's a big variety of enemies, and after you've played for a while, New stuff shows up out of nowhere. You're like, whoa, there's even more things? And then you play some more and you play some more and it's like, there's even more things! And you play some more, you play some more, there's even more things! They keep surprising you with more and more stuff. The game you can keep, compare it best to, of course, is Dead Cells, where there's a lot of stuff in Dead Cells as well. You play a bunch and there's a bunch of stuff that comes up. Same thing here. Side by side, Hades edges it, in my opinion. Probably because I am a big fan of Super Giant as well. I could play both games for hours, and for this year it's Hades. And just keep playing it again and again and again. After I record this 10, this top 10, I'm going to play Hades. That's how much I'm enjoying it. I just keep playing the game. It's a very fun game. 
recommend the heck out of it. It's just a good roguelike. You will enjoy it a lot. And the voice acting's really good. The music is stellar. The visuals are amazing. There is... I can't complain about a dang thing with this game. It's one of those games where I can't find a weakness if I wanted to. That's really it. Like, I can think right now. What is a weakness to the game? Can't think of one. The only thing... The only weakness is what's inherent to roguelikes, where sometimes you can just have a bad run. Because that's what a roguelike is. That's about it. But even a bad run can be pretty fun as well if you can figure it out. So, Hades deserves fifth place. It's really good. Number four is Animal Crossing New Horizon. So, anyone who's a big fan of Hades, like what, any game over Hades? How could anything be over it? Well, Animal Crossing is a hell of a game, too. Animal Crossing is also just culturally significant in another way, and that is the timing of this game. This game came out right when the virus hit America, or the world in general. It was the right game for people in general. Is this, this game to just spend a lot of time playing, just de-stressing from what's going on outside in the world. It was just a solid game coming at the right time. This is a game that you could waste your whole day on and you would enjoy it, you'd be happy. And I got a lot of happiness out of the game, that's why it's over at fourth place. Nintendo does it again, making another great first party game. And Animal Crossing just, it just makes you happy. It bores a lot of people as well, but for those who enjoy it, it makes you a happy person. You enjoy it a lot. There are so many villagers you can make friends with, and they are got so many different personalities, and they're just fun. And then, of course, there's cosmetics to play with, building your island, just fishing. There's a lot. This is a game to laze the day away. They're very good laze the day away kind of game. This is a de-stress game. Hades was a big, just intense game. This is the opposite of that, and it's very fun in that way. Love it a lot. There's not much I can say that people probably haven't already said about Animal Crossing. It's just this wholesome game that makes you happy, that makes you feel calm. It's just something that's good for when you need to just get away. That's what Animal Crossing is. And it's literally, of course, you got your own, you're making your island getaway. So perfect thematic right there. Animal Crossing fourth place deserves it. Third place is Control. That's right. 2019's Game of the Year for a ton of people. Ported in 2020 to PC, so hells yeah, this game's amazing. It's a really good shooter, third-person shooter. It's from behind, you get psychic powers, you have, well, tele telekinetic powers, and well, I think psychic powers works too. Uh, it's a run-and-gun kind of game, you're having a lot of fun running around fighting things. You're also dealing with creepiness, it's very much kind of like an X-Files kind of game. Remedy Entertainment's a developer, publishers 505 games. Remedy, Remedy Entertainment made... Max Payne. They also made Alan Wake. They also made Quantum Break. They made a lot of very interesting and fun games people have played for decades plus. Control, another game, another company just evolving. Control is the evolution of all those games. It's an evolution of Max Payne in gameplay, in narrative style, in all those things. It's an evolution of Alan Wake in those same ways, but more also with the creepiness and weirdness going on. Control is this big marriage of everything Remedy has been making up to that point. Control is fun gameplay, fun gunplay, the voice acting is really good, the narrative is very interesting, it really just gets into you. It's a very interesting idea, I love this world that Control has, and I really enjoyed playing it a lot. And I'm glad I got to play it, I'm glad it came to PC to play it, and it's just been really fun. The DLCs are not perfect, but they're pretty fun too. And there are a lot of really good moments in there, and the characters are pretty fun. I really enjoy... I can't remember his name all of a sudden, but they, the guy in the vault who's just taking care of all the... All the artifact, all the items. That guy is pretty interesting. He's very funny. And just the cast is pretty good. I can't say memorable, because I suddenly don't remember anyone's names, but... They're a fun cast. Of course, Adi. Everyone loves Adi. And the music is pretty good. Unfortunately, it's copyright stuff, but it's like... It's good music. It is good music, and like... There's a, there's a music segment where you're fighting and everything, where you take control, it's just so good. There's a lot of fun stuff to this game, I really enjoyed it, and it earns third place. It is It was a really fun ride, and just so creative. I just really enjoyed it a lot. Second place, Doom Eternal. I kind of wish I just put this tied with Animal Crossing just because. Um, Doom Eternal, developed by, of course, I, id so I almost said ID Software. id Software, publisher is Bethesda Software. Oh my god, Doom Eternal! It is just a better version of Doom 2016. It is so good. Just all the gunplay, all the gameplay, just tearing things apart. 
when you get really into the game, you feel pro. You feel like a killing machine. Doom Guy is so fun to play as. The soundtrack is amazing. There's a lot of goodies to get in here. A lot of Easter eggs that are fun to check out. You can unlock a bunch of soundtrack that's very interesting and not interesting. Very cool to listen to. It's very metal. Love metal. And I just, oh god. When you get your full arsenal, when you know what the heck you're doing, and you're just tearing demon after demon after demon after demon. You just endlessly just murder so much and you feel the power. It is power fantasy. Doom Eternal is power fantasy. It is so fun super shotgunning things and then switching over to maybe the chainsaw to get more ammo or go with the sword, cut things in half, tear things apart. You just feel so powerful playing this game. You got a keyboard and mouse in your hands. You're doing that, but it just feels like you're tearing things to pieces. And it's just so good. It really puts you in there. The Doom guy is so fun to play as. He's just one of those fun characters. He doesn't give you much, but he gives you enough to just go like, Oh, this is a guy who could definitely kill thousands upon thousands upon thousands of demons in just an afternoon and still be good to go. And I just love how the game just gives you these moments to let Doom guy be silly and ridiculous. And it's just so fun. Don't put a hole in Mars, and he puts a hole in Mars. It's just... Doom guy's a fun character. It, because he's just Brute Force Incarnate. And seeing what Brute Force can do can be very fun. And that is what this game is. It is just power fantasy. It is Brute Force fantasy. There's no gray area. You're just destroying demons. And it is the best mindless fun you can have all year. Doom Eternal. Loved it a lot. Second place. Hell yeah. Number one. No surprise. Kirby Fighters 2. So there was a fighting game that came out this year called Kirby Fighters 2. And Kirby, no, it's not, it's just not number one. It's not actually number one. If you clicked off before I got to that point, oh my god. Kirby Fighters 2 gets the Kirby Award. So this year, every year a new Kirby game comes out. Last year was Super Kirby Clash. This year, it is Kirby Fighters 2. The same team worked on both games, which is important because, of course, the virus happened. So they developed this game while at quarantine. So, the game is pretty fun, but there's definitely polish that could have been had and that would have happened if they were able to develop it together. But at the end of the day, we still got a Kirby game, so I'm happy about that. Kirby Fighters 2 is a pretty fun game. If you're a Kirby fan, you're gonna really love it. If you're not a Kirby fan, you're gonna like it a little bit. It's really a game for fans who enjoy Kirby. And it's not a- it's a pretty competent fighter, I feel. I enjoy it a lot. But at times it does feel wooden and a bit stale. That's just the nature of the beast of just making a game during quarantine. Hey, you know what? Let's double stack this award. Let's put in Part-Time UFO as well. It was ported to Switch this year as well. Part-Time UFO is a mobile game from Hal Egg. That's from the same company. This is just the mobile division. And it's a game where, well, you're a UFO. You pick things up, you drop them off. It's a kind of a physics-y kind of game. And it's very fun. It's on the Switch. 60 frames per second. Very, very fun. Very, very buttery in 60 frames. I love it so much. It's so good. Now let's talk about number one. Number one, Paper Mario Origami King. Yup, that's my number one. That is a controversial pick for a bunch of people and I don't know why. Paper Mario the Origami King was amazing. It was amazing. It's my favorite Paper Mario game since either Thousand Year Door or Super Paper Mario. It is somewhere in the top three contention. It might be number one, it might be number two, it might be number three. I'd have to play the other ones again. I loved Paper Mario the Origami King. People who love JRPGs, probably not a fan of that, but I really enjoyed it. I liked the idea of the, of the combat system. I really enjoyed it for the boss fights. The combat system during the boss fights was really fun. I thought the boss fights were hilarious. I really enjoyed them. Also, the value medals were really fun to play as well. People did not like that the bosses were stationary uh, tools, and I'm like, these are hilarious! I love this idea! I love that they're taking the concept of Paper Mario to this silly degree by making one of the bosses colored pencils. And that fight was hype. The colored pencil fight was hype. The stapler fight is so intense that, yeah, listen to me say, the stapler fight was so intense. <laughs> it is a really fun game! The story is amazing, the characters are great, the writing is so good for this game. The dialogue is great. There's so many jokes, so many moments. I can gush about this game alone for the entire, just twice the size of what I've said for every other game. I could, combined, I could say for this game, I could just talk and talk and talk 
It was so good. The soundtrack was incredible. The ebbs and the flows of this game, they were so good. I love the characters of this game. This game was something special for me. It came out of nowhere for me. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy a Paper Mario game. I like Paper Mario games. I've played almost all of them. There's only one I haven't played, and that's the one everyone hates, Sticker Star. And I really enjoy them. They're pretty fun. But I'm just expecting, like, you know, just an okay kind of fun game at the end of the day. And it didn't do that. It was amazing. I enjoyed all the little details that were in this game. I loved all the dialogue. It just, bl it took me in. This game is a 10 out of 10 for me. What's great is you don't have to do combat all the time in this game. That's something I don't enjoy the grind of JRPGs. You don't have to do combat all the time in this game. I 100% of this game on on Let's Play. On YouTube. The full 100% is on there. And this game got to me emotionally in so many different emotions. It was so many great high points. And then the low points, they really got to me as well. The dam broke open playing this game. Like, I'm that dude who just holds all his emotions in. And this game pulled them out. It broke something in me. <laughs> Is the best way to put it. It broke the dam of emotions for me. I really got connected to this game. I really enjoyed this game. I love the worlds. I love the characters. I hope that there's a sequel to Origami King itself in the future. I loved it a lot. This was a really fun game. It was something special. A lot of people slept on it, but I can't. It was good. I enjoyed the heck out of it. And this is the only one I'm... I'm so, we have, of course, gameplay of all the games on this top 10 list. All of them. And they're all very enjoyable things to watch and everything. But the one I'm re I, I recommend the most, uh, good and bad, is the Origami King LP. Because it was such a heck of a ride. And I fully voice all of it, so that might grant on people, but it was very fun to voice this game. It was very fun to experience this game. And Trouble's extremely fun. Doom Eternal is extremely fun, Animal Crossing, and such. All these games are fun to LP, or to stream, or to do whatever. This entire top 10 list, I recommend all these games. Of course, they're on the top 10 list. You should play all of them. They're very fun. But Origami King gets number one because it wasn't just fun. It got me in here. It really did. It got me in there. It pulled things out of me. It was just such a different kind of ride. Like, Doom Eternal... So fun! Don't have to think. So fun game. Control is another game where you want to think a little bit, but it was a very fun game. Animal Crossing New Horizon? Chill. You really just sit there, enjoy it, relax, everything. Hades, you are amped. You're having a bunch of fun. You're really trying to consider your movements and everything. Very good time. Hyrule Warriors? Fanboy game. Heck yeah. Genshin Impact? It's just a good, fun, grindy game. It's just nice collecting these different characters and all that stuff. Next time, Camera Squad, you gotta think, and it was fun to think. Journey, another emotional game, but it's not like this amazing gameplay thing. It's just very emotional. It gets to you a little bit. Monster Train was very fun, very creative. In your head again. Can't stop playing. Can't stop going. It was a really good game. But Paper Mario: The Origami King. I enjoyed the hell out of the out of the gameplay. It was very fun. I loved it a lot, and it emotionally got me right here. And there are just so many like little mini games you can play. So many different ideas to do. It was just fun. It was so fun. Honestly, there were people in the Paper Mario community who gave it a pass because it just wasn't Thousand Year Door again. And I think you're doing a disservice to yourself not playing this game. It was really good. Loved it a lot. It is game of the year. And that right there is the top 10 games of 2020 played by me. There were a lot of amazing games I didn't get to play, unfortunately. But these are the ones I got to play and they were great. They were awesome. Loved it a lot. So... There you go. I had fun talking. I hope you had fun watching and listening. At the end of the day, what, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time.